we're gonna talk about a dude that is an abs was that was at one point an absolute killer. Okay, an MMA fighter by the name of Tyrone Woodley. Okay, and I want to show you this guy. I want to show you some. We're gonna see. I mean, we're probably gonna get demonetized, but fuck it. I mean, do I really care about it? Can we? Can I at least get some likes on here for being demonetized to like kind of counterbalance the um, the oncoming demonetization? I'm not gonna play the audio. This is Tyrone Woody. This is the guy right here. This black guy. Absolute murderer of a fighter. Okay? Absolute murderer of a fighter. That's Don Hyung, Stun Gun Kim. That guy was a really good Korean fighter. This is Jay Heron, UFC veteran. Okay? Look at that. Mauler, dude. Mauler of a fighter. Look at this guy. Mauling. Shutting fools off, dude. Absolute killer. Got some good jujitsu as well. I think that's Darren Till he choked out there. Right? Yeah, that was Darren Till. This was brutal. This right here. Watch this knockout of Josh Koscheck. Look at this. Starches him with two right straights. I remember this specifically. Boom. One. Boom. Two. It's over. Okay. Absolute murderer. And this is when he won the UFC welterweight championship. Watch this. Here we go. Boom. One shot. Two shot. Three shot. Four. Okay, cool. Give me my belt. First round. First round KO of Raleigh Lawler. Absolute fucking monster. Okay, but then something happened. Okay, Tyrone decided that he wanted to become an activist. And in 2019, 2020, he started going real heavy. I mean, I think it started in 2016. He started real going real heavy with the fucking, the Black Lives Matter stuff. Take a look at his career right now. Okay. So, you have accepted the truth. Thank you for subscribing. By the way, if you guys want to participate in the chat, you have to hit the subscribe button, and you have to be subscribed for at least 10 minutes. So, 2019, March 2nd, he lost the title to a man named Kamaru Usman, a fucking badass Nigerian killer of a man who is such a good fighter, I'm just convinced he's on PEDs. I could be wrong. But this guy's just such a goddamn good fighter. I just, I assume he's on drugs. It's just insane how good he is. Um, Hardworking African guy. Used to like walk miles to the fucking well with his grandma in Africa to, to boil the water. And you got Tyrone coming in here crying about Black Lives Matter. Wah, wah, wah. And the thing is this. Sure, okay. If you want to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement, that's one thing. But just know that if you're performing at an elite level as a world-renowned global champion like Tyrone Woodley was, it is absolutely going to taint your mindset. Because you need to have one thing in your mind and one thing in your mind only when you want to win. I am the best. I am unstoppable. No one can beat me. I am unbeatable. I'm the best ever. 
I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Okay? Tyron Woodley has not won a fight in since September 8th, 2018. So all of 2019, he lost his fights. 2020, he lost both of his fights. And 2021 in March, he lost his fight, and he was cut from the UFC. I don't know if he was cut, but he, he played out his contract. And now, Tyron Woodley is going to fight a YouTuber in a boxing match. Okay? So he's going from global welterweight champion of the world and the number one mixed martial arts organization on the planet. Okay? Starching dudes and just dominating them all the way to the top. I mean, look, from 2014 till 2018, he did not lose a single fight. But then he wants to get all fucking political. And then Gareth says he will lose the boxing match. Honestly, I think he's going to get slept by Jake Paul as well. Because, um, again, here's the number one reason why. Okay. Now, what I'm about to play for you is just painful. But I want to, I just want to show you transparently what happened. This is real. This is a grown man. This is a professional multi-million dollar athlete. All right. This was the press conference at his one of his most recent fights. This is at UFC Vegas 11. And UFC Vegas 11 was in 2020 of uh last year. And I'm just going to I'm just going to play it for you and just watch let you guys This is right before the presidential election as well. And take a look here. This is three minutes long, and we're going to watch all three minutes just so I can really drive the point home. Sorry, I appreciate you, uh, your time today. Um, originally, we all thought that you and Colby were going to be up there together. And this is going to be a joint press conference. We find out it's not. Let me ask you are, you, are you disappointed that you don't get the chance to, to face him down, to, to, to you know, deal with him, or are you kind of happy you don't have to put up with his stuff today? I'm just excited that Black Lives Matter. Are you surprised that in the lead-up to this fight that he hasn't been more vocal? I mean, this is Kobe Covington. He's almost been respectful of you. Is that shocking to you at all that he hasn't gone into you more like he, he normally does? Um, you know, I'm just really excited that Black Lives Matter. Fair enough, and uh, we know that it looks like Usman and Burns is, is later, um, you know, this year. A win here would be big for you. Would you keep yourself ready to be a, a fill-in opponent on a title fight, or are you at a point in your career where you wouldn't, wouldn't do that? I feel like, you know, a victory here just really shows how much Black Lives Matter. Fair enough, and then my last question for you then, obviously the Black Lives Matter shirt on, clearly you want to keep it in that direction today. Would, would you like to use this platform to deliver any messages to everyone out there? Just that Black Lives Matter. Hey, Tyron, is uh, obviously the political movement of Black Lives Matter has taken a lot of momentum over the past few months and even the year. Um, do you think this fight amplifies to you the need to express your support for that cause? No, I just think that Black Lives Matter. Could you tell us when Colby first started talking about you years ago when you were training together, were you surprised based on your interactions in the gym that he decided to start campaigning against you in a way that he did? No, I wasn't surprised, especially since Black Lives Matter. Cool. Thank you, Tyron. Uh, Tyron right here. Uh, uh, before your last few fights, especially in the, the Darren Till, the Maya, and the Wonderboy Thompson fights, you've kind of uh, built your camp around the specific fighter. But now Colby Covington and his coach have come out saying that they realize he's not even a southpaw anymore, he's come, he, which hinting that he might fight orthodox. I'm wondering if you heard that, and does that change anything about your game plan? I just hope they realize Black Lives Matter. Tyron, how you doing? Would you shake Kobe Covington's hand if he realized that Black Lives Matter? I like your style, and I definitely realize that Black Lives Matter. 
Tyron, is there anything uh, specifically from a social standpoint that you would that you would like to? Um, I mean, obviously, even even saying the Black Lives Matter thing, is there anything in particular within that that subject that you you would also like to shine some light on? Just the fact that Black Lives Matter, I think, is pretty simple. Thank you, guys. 38-year-old, multi-millionaire, grown man, 38 years old at the time, not, not, not concerned that he lost the championship, not concerned that at that time he was on a two-fight losing streak, currently on a four-fight four losing streak, nothing at all. Honestly, to be honest, um... That was that is more likely to hurt the Black Lives Matter movement than to uh, do any good things for it, right? I mean, just think about that. Sanspeer, does he give any of his millions to the black families? What do you think? 